Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today I'm coming back with a second video. I'm probably going to release this just a little bit later. I just finished recording and uploading the last one but obviously because the YouTube algorithm sucks I have to try and spread them out as much as I can but this is a bit of news that has kind of slipped by my radar. I thought I had seen it but I never actually read any articles about it and it just seemed to me like maybe it was speculation but apparently if Collider's saying it then you know it must be true. Um, uh, but in all seriousness, a huge shout out to Indy and Cognito or at after Last Jedi for reaching out to me. He was reaching out to me saying, dude, why aren't you and some of the other people talking about this? And I honestly think the reason why a lot of the other channels aren't talking about this is because of the fact that the uh, Rotten Tomatoes and Captain Marvel stuff has really just taken over a lot of the news cycle lately. And I know that a lot of people are getting sick of it, but at the end of the day, you have to understand that when it comes to YouTube, there really is this game that you have to play with the algorithm. If you want your channel to grow, if you want your channel to get out there, then you have to be covering the stories that everyone is searching up right now, and not a whole lot of people are really looking for these types of stories. Now, that does not mean that I don't think that this story is important, which is why I'm doing a video on it in the first place, but again, thank you Indy Incognito for bringing this to my attention, because there is obviously a few things that I can say. So, for those that do not know, Star Wars Episode Nine panel confirmed for Star Wars Celebration. As it said here, a panel for Star Wars Episode Nine has been confirmed for Star Wars Celebration Chicago next month, with J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy in attendance, Raise your hand if you think that's when we'll get the trailer. Very likely that we'll get the trailer. However, I think it's a very interesting thing that this is going to be the first public appearance of Kathleen Kennedy since she received her honorary Oscar. And before that, since, what, Solo, a Star Wars story, was just about to come out? And then she kind of went into hiding because that movie was awful and that movie was, you know, <laughs> basically showing, you know, $200 million loss was all because of her. Here's the thing, people that oftentimes forget. I talk about how the fact that Solo Star Wars Story lost $200 million, and people oftentimes kind of just hear that and they say, okay, yeah, it lost money. I don't think you really understand why that movie lost money. Remember that Kathleen Kennedy is the reason the movie lost money. How do I know this? Well, she is the one that hired Lord and Miller to direct the film. The film was around 80% of the way through production, and then she decided, because it wasn't matching up with her vision, because everyone knows that Kathleen Kennedy has the best vision when it comes to Star Wars, right? Hmm, remember The Last Jedi? So she comes in, fires them, hires Ron Howard, asks him to reshoot everything, or rather Ron Howard says, okay, I really can't do anything with this. They they reshoot around 80% of the movie, we get what we get, it's a mediocre C-level film at best, not as bad as The Last Jedi as far as the story arc is concerned, but it's also a completely unnecessary film. The reason why this is Kathleen Kennedy's fault is not only because this delayed the film and delayed the shooting and delayed it to be a release, but it also ballooned the budget to astronomical proportions. The projected budget is between 350 to 400 million dollars, which is insane when you think about it. Seeing that most big blockbusters today cost between 150 and 250, the fact that a smaller independent, you know, independent story that is, Star Wars film, would cost upwards of 350 to 450 million just for the production of budget alone, not even taking into account the around 100 million plus dollars they probably spent on marketing for the film, you start to realize that, oh my god, the break-even point for that movie was absolutely astronomically high. And the reason why I blame Kathleen Kennedy for this is because just imagine, if you will, if Kathleen Kennedy, being a good producer, or not even good producer, being a good head of Lucasfilm, being a good visionary mindset, a good visionary president at the top, which we know at this point she is not, she could have said, okay, this is the direction that I have, here is a director or a group of directors that I think can have that vision, boom, I got them, boom, they're doing exactly what I expected, boom, they're taking it in their own direction as well, the fans are going to be happy, everyone's going to be happy, we're going to make money, and therefore everything will be fine. But instead what she did was she said, no, I have my own vision and my vision makes no sense because if you just look to the fact that episode seven and eight kind of are connected but kind of aren't connected and episode nine is going to go in whatever direction it wants to go into you realize oh my god this is a jumbled mess so it makes a lot of sense to see what happened behind the scenes for solo star wars story especially since something very similar happened to rogue one rogue one had a lot of behind the scenes stuff had to do a bunch of reshoots can balloon that budget a little bit too but that film was able to actually at least make over a billion dollars and it's because of the fact that it had not come out after the last jedi that's why when people say oh, the reason why Solo failed is because it came out in May. 
We know that's not true because we know that there are other films that have come out in May that have been financially successful, including Star Wars films that have done well in May. So it cannot be May. Then they said Star Wars 15. Well, we know that that's not true because, I'm sorry, you literally just had a movie come out this weekend called Captain Marvel that is coming out just a month before another movie coming out called Endgame, which are both doing very well, or rather, Captain Marvel is doing very well at this point, has the potential to break a billion dollars at the box office, and then you have Endgame, which is guaranteed to probably get to at least two billion dollars at the box office, maybe even get it's somewhat, somehow, please God, I know that everyone's having issues with Endgame, and I have my issues with Endgame, and the, and I obviously have my issues with Disney and everything else, but I still love the Russo Brothers, so I'm torn in two directions because it's like I want to support the Russo Brothers and the work that they've done, but I also don't want to support Disney because of the crap that they've done, and so I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, but luckily because I'm a YouTuber, and luckily because I'm a movie review YouTuber, I get to kind of use that as an excuse for me to eventually go see the movie overall, and, and probably will end up paying for it. Oh, that makes you a hypocrite then for talking about the boycotts and everything else. Hey, look, I, I know what that means. I, I I know that it seems that way, but also I think that all the logical people out there can at least understand where I'm coming from. But you have all of these things, all these pieces of the pies coming in, but at the end of the day, all that you're left with is this simple fact. You have people running Disney at this point who do not really know what they're doing. Kevin Feige, again, seemed to know what he was doing, and then Captain Marvel came out. But getting back to the point of comparing the MCU and talking about Star Wars fatigue, why is it that you have a film that is making this much money, has already broken even at this point, unless Deadline apparently is to be believed, and the number isn't over 500, you know, is somehow over, well over $500 million at this point, which was, again, the standard break-even number. And if that is the case, then, okay, how is it that you can say that this film is making money, Endgame is expected to make a lot of money, I'm sure you're going to start hearing very soon, oh my god, the pre-sales are outpacing everything except for Captain Marvel, and Captain Captain Marvel is going to stay in the discussion all the way up until Endgame releases, so I'm sure that that's not going to be anything, you know, going on. But you have all of these films coming out, six months apart from each other, sometimes you have two movies a year, three movies a year, and yet somehow, some way, in 10 years, in over 22 films, you have not had any type of superhero MCU fatigue. You have not seen it on that end. And so fatigue doesn't work either, because when you look at The Last Jedi coming out, and you look at Solo Star Wars Story, there's about a five-month gap, which is plenty of time. Take into account that it's a little bit more than a month between uh, Captain Marvel and also uh, and also Endgame, and you realize, okay, so they obviously don't even believe that story because they're doing it themselves by putting out two films very close to each other. So if it's not fatigue, then what else is it? Oh, wait a minute, that's right. A weak story can only go so far. You can have, you've had plenty of weak stories and weak movies and bad movies that have made money. Great example, coming out in March. You know, it's so funny that everyone's saying all the records that, you know, Captain Marvel's going to break in March. Here's an interesting point. You have freaking Alice in Wonderland that is likely going to still have made more in its run in March than Captain Marvel will by the end of it. And if anyone's going to say anything about that movie, they're going to say, oh, good God, that movie objectively is not very good. But that doesn't mean anything, because guess what? Bad movies make money. Movies that are not good, that both the critics and audiences can actually agree on for a change that aren't very good, can still make bank for a variety of different reasons. The reason why, the main and primary reason why Solo A Star Wars Story ended up losing money and making $600 million less than any other Star Wars film under the Disney tenure is because of The Last Jedi. And I know that the Scott Mendelsons of the world are going to try and say, oh, well, Captain Marvel just proved you wrong because you said that there was just as much dissatisfaction going on with this film and this franchise. And so why isn't it that this film didn't somehow lose money? Well, that's a pretty simple solution. Captain Marvel did not come out after a bad movie. What were the two movies that came out before Captain Marvel? Infinity War and Ant-Man and the Wasp. You know, Infinity War was the movie of 2018, despite what the Oscars and everyone else want to try and say about how Black Panther was revolutionary and all of these great things. It was a fine B-minus film. Again, it was a fine B-level film. Nothing too special. Nothing too amazing. Some pretty solid stuff. Great acting, for sure. Cinematography was pretty good. And, uh, you know, the effects were uh, a mixed bag, ranging from total crap to something pretty good. So you have all of these things going on. You have all of these things going on last year, and you realize that the MCU was in a good position. So even when the Captain Marvel stuff came out, even when all the Brie Larson nonsense came out, guess what? People were still able to say, hey, I'm a normie, and I'm not paying attention to this stuff anyway. All I'm seeing is the Captain Marvel trailer and saying, hey, this actually looks like it might be a good time. Or people will say, I don't want to see any trailers. I don't want to see anything. Again, these normal, uh, you know, I call them the standard people. I call them just the everyday 
generic fans. I call them the generic MCU fans, meaning that they're not heavily invested in the lore. They're not heavily invested in the comics. They're not necessarily even heavily invested in all of the news stories and the spoiler talk and all of this stuff. It makes sense then that a lot of people then would go to see it. It also makes sense when you realize that the movie was packed into as many theaters as possible, as possible in as many countries as possible, and therefore it was very front-ended. You know, the, the, the front end was very heavy loaded, and I even said that from the very beginning, just talking about Thursday and why the Thursday did, Thursdays did so well. And I think that what you're going to see is when this weekend two comes in, it's going to be a massive drop off. You know, the speculation is between 54 and 60 because that's about the average MCU drop off. I think it'll be a little bit more. Again, the China drop off looks to be around 70%, if not more, which is also kind of standard when it comes to MCU films in China. But we really won't know how well that film will do overall by the end of its run. And at the end of the day, if it indeed makes over a billion dollars, we can thank the general MCU audience that is very excited for Endgame overall. But bringing it back to Star Wars, bringing it back to everything like that, the reason why Kathleen Kennedy is to blame is because she is the one that fired Lord and Miller, uh, Miller, for Lord and Miller, took this production into absolute chaos and ballooned the budget to a point where even if this film had somehow made money, even if this film had been successful, had been marketed well, had actually had people interested in it, it, it would have still at least then made money. And so, therefore, you have to ask yourself, okay, wait a minute, the marketing was there. It had Star Wars on the title. It was telling a story that most people didn't care about, but general audience were going to say, hey, it's about Han Solo. I kind of want to go see that. So if this was a normal film, guess what? It, it probably still would have broken even. So there must have been another factor going on there that was not going on with Captain Marvel. And the thing was, is that a bad, bad, bad movie came out beforehand. The $1.3 billion of The Last Jedi, which had a 67% drop domestically, had massive drops, a 92% drop in China alone, had massive drops all over the world. It made most of its money that opening weekend, and then slowly trickled in smaller amounts to the point where it was finally able to actually make the $1.3 billion. But you look at that number, guess what I look at? I look at Solo. I say, hey, wait a minute, but Solo lost $200 million. Even if, even if they had not ballooned the budget of that film, guess what? It still would not have broken even. It still would have lost money. And that, I think, is the biggest key to all of this. That Kathleen Kennedy has shown herself time and again to not be a competent leader of Lucasfilm. She might be a good producer. She might be good with the numbers behind the scenes. She might be good with certain things and certain tasks. She is not good as a visionary head. Kevin Feige, all the way up until this point, up until Captain Marvel, has shown himself consistently to be very good, has shown himself consistently to have a vision. Even if I, even though I don't like Captain Marvel, even though I think Captain Marvel is a big mistake, you can still at least understand the pieces of the pie that he's trying to put together. But with her coming to celebration, if this is indeed going to stand true, two things are going to happen. One of two things are going to happen. Either one, she's going to show up on the stage and she's going to get a mixed chorus of boos and cheers. Or two, they're going to do something, somehow, some way, to try and get the crowd. I'm sorry, the three options. So second option would be that they're going to probably release the trailer, release the name, and then have her come out because then everyone's going to be so hyped up that they might actually have more cheers than boos in any given situation. Or possibility three, which might not be likely, but hey, who knows at this point. Either way, my flights are booked, so I'm going to be in Chicago. They may not let us in. I know I'm going to be wearing my Phantom Menace t-shirt. I know that I'm going to be wearing my Soily t my Soilo t-shirt during those days. I know that I'm going to have all this stuff showing myself who I am, showing my true colors, that I am a true hardcore fan. The fans that did not show up for Solo. Because that is the difference between Solo and Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, at this point, the MCU has become more normies, as we call them, as Nerdrotic especially has described them as, than hardcore fans. The hardcore fans stayed home for Solo Star Wars Story, which is why it lost money, because they are the ones that make up the most and the vast amount of profits. So at the same token, you look at the MCU and you have the hardcore fans that stayed home, that had issues, that did not want to go. But the normies now in this universe grossly out, you know, outpace it. And how do we know this? MCU, 10 years, 22 films. That's a long time to build up a fan base. That's a long time to build up trust. Star Wars, intermittent three films every so often, the prequels, it was a long time after, you brought in Disney, Force Awakens, you brought in The Last Jedi, you only had a couple of films to try and build a new audience, and that audience was not built enough to be able to support a smaller film like Solo Star Wars Story. And so it all comes back to the decision that Kathleen Kennedy made. So as I said before, even if, even if they had not ballooned the budget, 
Kathleen Kennedy would still have been responsible because even though they lost $200 million because of her stupid mistake of firing Lord and Miller and deciding to reshoot everything, she is also the one that brought in Ryan Johnson. She is also the one that brought in everything that came through The Last Jedi. She was also one of the persons that said nothing and stayed silent when all of the things that Ryan Johnson and many others were saying about the fan base were going on. And that is the reason why the fan base has been so broken. We thought as part of The Phantom Menace that the similar thing had happened to the MCU, and it did. The hardcore fan base of the MCU, the hardcore comic book fans of the MCU are pretty much the, <laughs> the vast majority of the movement that's saying, hey, I don't want what's going on on screen. I don't want my identity politics on this movie because guess what? It's ruining the comics industry right now. But now, because of the 22 films, because of the 10 years, the audiences have now shifted. No longer is it the hardcore fan base. For the Star Wars fans, for the Star Wars movies, they still have that very strong Star Wars EU-based people who love all the stories, all the mythology, all the merchandise and everything like that. And they're not reaching the audiences that they think that they are. They, and they saw the first number for The Force Awakens and they thought, oh, that's just the new audience that we brought in. Part of it is, part of it is the general audience, but most of it actually, I would say a core part of that is the, the, major, the, the main fan audience. But when Solo Star Wars Story came out, they said, no, no, I'm going to stay home for this. I'm going to take a hard pass on this. And it's just interesting to see how all this plays out. But anyway, so uh, thank you once again, After Last Jedi, for reaching out to me with this. I know that we've been kind of missing a lot of Star Wars news lately, especially on this channel. I know a lot of people started following me because I was doing a lot of the Star Wars news that other channels uh, were doing. And I know that I've been spending a lot of time on things like Captain Marvel. But at the end of the day, I'm also trying to cover as many things as they interest me. I'm not just making media videos for the sake of making videos. I make videos if it's something that I feel like I can talk about. I make videos if I feel like it's something that I have passionate about. And this is definitely something that I definitely want to talk about because I am going to celebration. I do have my issue with Kathleen Kennedy. If she goes off on stage, I am going to be one of those people going, boo, boo, go home, boo. Please step down for the love of God, boo. Let someone else take over. I'm going to be that person if they even allow me to go in. But at the same time as well, I am also someone who is not getting a whole lot of Star Wars news because most of it these days tend to just be, you know, nothing burgers. This one's not. So, at the last shot, I thank you for reaching out with me for this and also for reaching out with me about a bunch of other Star Wars related articles. And I hope that I'm able to start talking about more Star Wars stuff and also other non Captain Marvel related videos as well. But we shall see how things go because it's all about what interests me. Again, I do this for fun. This is not a job to me. Obviously, it's become like a job almost because of uh, just the, the, the monetization and the ad revenue. And I'm just so thankful for you guys for supporting these videos and for liking it and for defeating the trolls in the comments and all this stuff. But at the end of the day it is also a, a hobby again i do have a primary job and that is still going to be my main focus and that is the reason why i'm going to just try and have fun with this if i'm not if i wasn't having fun with this i wouldn't be doing it i do this for fun and if you're having fun with me awesome and thank you again reach out to me if you have suggestions i know i've had a bunch of people and guys i have heard you uh reach out with me with private comments private messages saying hey this is what i think that you should be doing and hey i don't really like this direction and i'm open to those criticisms i'm open up to constructive criticism no problem and i'm hoping that this type of video might be a little bit different and might be something that you're more interested in but please keep giving me your thoughts keep giving me uh, your recommendations you're much more likely to reach me if you comment on the pinned comment to any video just because now the videos the comment section just goes absolutely insane especially with the giant influx of trolls but email and twitter are also really great ways to interact with me as well so many guys that's gonna be it for me tonight so again this is going to be posted sometime tonight also please keep in mind that we have a live stream going on tomorrow around 6 30 p.m central standard time it's gonna be a regular live stream no movie this week i will be getting back to you guys about when our next movie night stream is going to be since i know there's a hardcore group of about 30 or 40 people that like to join us on those but again please let us you know just uh, follow our screen streaming schedule every monday and tuesday tuesday right before the high council and also on saturdays we do streams usually around 6 to 6 30 central standard time i always try and send events for that as well follow us on the discord or on twitter if you would like more information about that but that's going to be it for me today thank you so much for watching if you like this video smash that like button give us a thumbs up give us a subscribe you're all amazing and beautiful people have a wonderful wonderful evening as i'm about to go off to yet again another their doctor because I am just falling apart. God, allergies suck. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.